do something here called hit record because I always forget to do that. So I'm Julie Slavinsky. <laughs> I'm the director of events at Warwick's and we are here couch surfing with authors Liz Fenton and Lisa Steinke and with um, Reese Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine pick for February's The Sanatorium with Sarah Pierce. Hello. So hi everybody. So um, just real quick, um, while Facebook and everybody's letting us know what's going on, um, Amanda, will you be able to put into the um, chat and comments and everything that how to buy the book? So Amanda will take care of that. So Warwick's is open for business if you are in, we are located in um, La Jolla, San Diego. So if you are in that area and would like to come by and see us, we would love to see you. Um, nothing better than browsing books and we have a holiday called uh, we were talking about this the other day to valentine's and if you don't have a valentine that's okay personal shopping is accepted so <laughs> buy yourself that valentine book or card um so it'll be in both chats we'll be monitoring the q a on the webinar so if you have a question put that into the q a um, we'll also monitor facebook um, for any questions that come in there and we'll bring those in um liz you and i'll talk text each other and figure out are you doing the interview or is um lisa's doing it lisa and then i'm going to i'm going to handle the q and a Q&A. that comes in here perfect perfect yeah. so um if you have any questions put those into either comment section and we'll make sure that those get in i think that's everything that i have to say except for i wanted to actually thank Pam Dorman Books and Viking um, for allowing us to host you today. This is amazing. I know you're in the UK. It's late for you. Um, we appreciate you being with us. So with that, Amanda and I are going to go off screen and you guys have a great conversation. Thank okay, you. Great. Thanks, Julie. Uh, well, we're so excited to be with you guys today. As she mentioned, uh, I'm Liz Fenton and I'm here with Lisa Steinke. She's my best friend of over 30 years and we've also co-authored seven novels together. Uh, the most recent came out in July. It's called How to Save a Life and it's a dark heart pounding love story with a Groundhog Day twist. We just had Groundhog Day last week. So very Good timing if you're kind of feeling the groundhog. <laughs> um, those and that book and all of our books can be purchased at Warwick's. Um, you can get signed copies there and Julie and Amanda will be putting links in. And obviously you'll be able to buy uh, copies of Sarah's books. And I just want to kind of remind everyone to support your local bookstores. Um, you know, when I've gone in and I know Lisa has as well and ordered from Warwick's online, it was so easy. Uh, media mail, super cheap to get here, and it arrived quickly. Um, so please remember, your bookstores have had a really hard time this year. So please, you know, Warwick does so much work putting on so many amazing events. If you can see their event calendar, I mean, it is legit. And they do that for nothing. So please support them uh, by buying uh, books from them and all your local independent bookstores. Okay, so let's get going. Now, don't forget down on the bottom, if you scroll down, there's a little Q&A button. Go ahead and hit that button if you have a question and we'll make sure that it gets answered. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we're so excited to have Sarah Pierce here today. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She grew up in Devon, UK, and studied English literature and creative writing at the University of Warwick before completing a postgraduate diploma in broadcast journalism. She lived in Switzerland for several years before returning to the UK. The Sanatorium is her first novel. It was published in the US one week ago. Welcome, Sarah. We're happy to have you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And okay, I'm so going to ask yeah. the question. Usually, yeah. that's fine. I'm I know. Jump it's in fine. here. I know. <laughs> yeah. She usually says, "Now Lisa's going to ask the question." But I figured it out since we've done this a few times since March, right? <laughs> um, so welcome and the sanatorium, uh, which I just have to start out by saying uh, I just finished. It's really, really good. I could not figure out what was going to happen. I thought I had it. I was wrong really really good so everybody you have to buy this book and read it immediately and it's a it was a page turner and it's nearly 400 pages long but it was a page turner and i'm a slow reader so I you are a such a slow reader i was like yeah i just want to interject like that is such a huge compliment because she is like a snail reader. I'm a very fast reader, but she's like a total turtle. I, I so. guess I can read fast and the book is good. That's, I mean, I guess that's the key. All right. <laughs> yes, you should. Um, well, it has received high praise and, and not to mention it's a Reese uh, book club pick. She calls it an eerie atmospheric novel that had me completely on the edge of my seat. 
And um, I'm sure you haven't talked about this yet, but we have to ask you how it's been being a Reese pick, debut author, just right out of the gate. Yeah, it's just been the biggest thrill. Um, I've been wo welcomed with open arms into the community, but yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Since I found out the news, it's been a little bit crazy, but thrilling. I'm just enjoying the ride, I have to say. Well, congratulations, it's well-deserved. Um, oh, so tell us, give us a, a little um, synopsis on what it's about. Yeah, so the sanatorium um, is a thriller, uh, a creepy thriller, I should say. So if you're easily scared, watch out. Um, it's set in a luxury hotel called Le Somme, which has been converted from an old abandoned sanatorium really high in the Swiss Alps. Um, the book follows Ellen Warner, a British detective, as she travels to the hotel to celebrate her brother's engagement. But things take a really kind of dark turn almost as soon as she arrives when her brother's fiance, Law, disappears. Um, yeah, Ellen is kind of put under pressure. She's the only detective in the hotel when a huge snowstorm hits. So it's all down to her. Yeah, it's, I mean, again, I just have to say so good. Um, so I think I read that you, um, the idea came from something you saw in the news. Is that right? If you can just tell us a little bit more about like what sparked yeah. the idea. Yeah, it actually stemmed from an article I read in a local Swiss magazine, which was all about the history of sanatoria in the area. Um, and I'd, I'd actually lived in Switzerland in my 20s. I always thought the mountains would be a great place for a thriller. There's something really dark and sinister about them, particularly in the middle of a storm. So when I read the article, I thought, aha, I've kind of got the seed of the idea for a book. And I have to say, I went down a huge Google rabbit hole about sanatoriums and watched some amazing videos. <laughs> There's a, a, a lot of urban exploration videos where they go into to abandoned buildings and explore and my opening scenes of the novel are really inspired by that yeah lots and lots of great research so the idea and the plot sort of really flowed from that initial article well yeah I was gonna say because it's a it's an intricate plot I mean a lot is happening so you read this yeah. you read this um magazine article and then how did I mean you mentioned you you went down a rabbit hole but how do you get from that to what it became I mean, tell us a little bit about your your writing process with this book? It was, a, did you outline it or did you just sit down and go? Yeah, no, I, I very much outlined it. I had the idea of the building and I have to say it very much became a character really quite quickly in my own mind. So the actual sanatorium building, I fleshed that out. And then I had the idea of Ellen. Um, and something I really wanted to do from a plot point of view was explore the sort of sibling relationship. And I think there's a lot of books that explore sisters, but I really wanted to do the brother and sister dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I had looked, did lots of research and yeah, the ideas without giving away too many spoilers about the last half of the book, my research um, into around what other sanatorias were used for fed into that. So the plot became quite organic, but I very much sort of structured it from beginning to end. I don't think you can really do a thriller like this unless you have that idea of what's going to happen. But there were some surprises that the characters threw my way, which was good. Yeah, and there were a lot of surprises they threw my way. <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit more about your research. Um, you talked about um, Crans, Montana. Is that even how you say it? I mean, yeah, I'm that's exactly it. how you say it. <laughs> okay, uh, which is the inspiration for the location. So if you can tell us a little bit, because it's, I mean, you do such a good job describing the atmosphere. Oh, so if you can tell you. us a little bit more. Yeah, so Crans Montana is only a few hours from Geneva. So when I moved to Switzerland, I lived in the city, but we spent all of our weekends kind of exploring. Um, and Crans Montana is just a couple of hours away and it's a small Alpine town. Uh, it's a little bit undiscovered, not loads of people go there, um, but a family friend, we discovered it through a family friend who had a holiday home there. And it's just beautiful. You have 360 degree views of the Alps. Um, and yeah, it was great knowing a place so well. We visit there a lot. We have a holiday home there and it's uh, yeah, just a wonderful place to be very quiet. But as I say, we have had a few experiences where it's been uh, in the middle of a snowstorm and you're on the mountain. And I thought I could describe that really, really well. So. Yeah, I mean, you have some pictures where as I was looking at your Instagram, you have some pictures where it looks like you're you up on this mountain looking down I mean are you skiing what were you doing up there yeah you no, look like you're really high <laughs> yeah they were a big ski family um yeah okay I, when, I, when I when we were skiing around there was lots of spots I kind of had in my mind where would the hotel be so the book the hotel in the book is called La Somme and there is actually um a hotel in Crans Montana called Hotel Chetzeron which has been converted from a lift station into a hotel and if you can imagine they have the 
um, area at the front where the cable cars went in and out with huge glass windows. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a minimalist hotel and yeah, a little bit eerie in some ways as well. So my inspiration was, was very much uh, from there, but yeah, it's a beautiful resort. It was, I mean, it was clear that you had not only been in this area that you imagined it, but that you, like just some of the scenes just were yeah. really well done. And so then when I went afterward and, and looked at your Instagram and explained. Um, so more to the, more about like how much you knew from research. I mean, avalanches, mountains, the police procedure in different countries. Like, did you conduct interviews with people or how did you get that research? Yeah, it was quite fun. I have to profess I'm not an expert on police procedure either in the UK <laughs> or in Switzerland. <laughs> so Swiss police procedure was a complete unknown. But yeah, they were so kind. I contacted the Swiss police and the local police um, were willing to do an interview with me. But one caveat they did have, they said, we, I took them through the plots, but they said, we very much believe that the Swiss police could get anywhere at any time. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I took the liberties with having an av avalanche that they couldn't access. Right, them. you were, because they couldn't get up there. <laughs> I didn't Which seemed that. believable though. I mean, how would they have really gotten, up? I know what they're saying, but like, how would they have actually gotten up there? That's, I don't. That's what I thought. And actually, I don't know if you yeah. heard, a few years ago, there was an avalanche and um, there's a hotel in Italy that was cut off for several days. So yeah, huge walls of snow. So they had to um, batter their way through. So yeah, I, I very much thought if it was a big enough avalanche, the Swiss police probably wouldn't find their way. But no, yeah, they, they were very, very open um, at talking me through procedure. Um, and yeah, they said we would very much encourage a British detective if she did have those skills, obviously to be limited with her investigation, but she could do some investigation. So they helped me out there. Liz, did you say you have Yes, yeah, sorry. Yep, I was just unmuting myself. Yep, we got a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, one of them I'm going to hold, and uh, it's talking about your next book, uh, uh, Kristen, we'll get to yours, okay. but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait a little bit on that one. Um, but we have a, a question from Catherine. She's asking, what do you hope readers take from your novel? Yeah, I think one of the things that I really wanted to explore in this book, um, and it's something a lot of people have been asking me when reading, is about having a female detective and a female detective who is perhaps a little bit different from the norm. I think I mm -hmm. wanted to have a character who really doesn't have it all together. She doesn't have all the tricks. She's very open about her emotions and feelings. Um, and I wanted to really explore how the characters around her sort of responded to that and even to the readers too. I think it sort of echoes very much a theme within the novel, which is how people who are open with their emotions, not necessarily women, are perhaps judged and how that makes people feel. And I think as she goes about her work, she is anxious, she is panicky about things. And I think that kind of reflects how people are in real life. So yeah, I think that's one of the things I want to take away is that people are able to do their jobs and be open about their emotion. It isn't something that has to be suppressed necessarily. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Kristen is asking, do you write full time or do you have other creative passions that you pursue? Yeah, I have to say I write full time and at the moment it has been everything. I have two small children <laughs> and we've been homeschooling. So yeah, uh, aside from that, reading is really the big thing. As soon as I have any time, my reading took a bit of a dive during lockdown. I lost my reading mojo a little bit because I was concentrating on writing. And I think the concentration on all of that new cycle was, was huge. But yeah, now I, I, I like to do a lot of sports as well, but I suppose reading and writing are my main creative passions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, Lisa, I'm going to send it back to you okay. and then I'll, we'll come, I'll come back to the other question as we get a little bit uh, I wanted to, further in. Okay. Sorry. I wanted to ask, a, go back to Ellen, the character and, um, was she the first that you came up with or how did you decide, how did you develop your characters before or were they very detailed or as you were going, did they kind of come to life? Yeah, no, Ellen was very much the, the starting point I had in my mind. I wanted this female detective. Um, and yeah, I wanted to play with a few of the sort of tropes around that. And yeah, I then sort of populated it. As I said before, I think I really wanted that sibling relationship. So her relationship with her brother, I had in mind that sort of backstory that I wanted to bring in. Um, and then actually while I was in Switzerland as well, I read some really great articles in some magazines I found in a hotel about local property developers. And I thought, again, that could be mm. quite interesting, actually pulling in the idea of who owns the hotel into the book. So it kind of flowed quite organically, but definitely, I don't know about you, but during writing, I really do get to know the characters. So there were elements of the characters which came out while I was writing 
so yeah it's kind of a mixture of both plotting and sort of feeling my way through it yeah that that's how it is for us too i think you kind of go in with an idea but then yeah. they always surprise you which sounds so silly to say but it is true yeah no, they have yeah. a mind of their own but thank yeah. god because if you know you're in a writing slump it really helps how long did it take you to write this book yeah it's probably about 18 months from start to finish it was relatively a quick process once i had that initial idea um yeah i plotted it and lots of it was quite, well for me quite fast paced in terms of writing I was very caught up in the action and I mm -hmm. yeah it became quite a quick process but the editing I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist with the editing so I had to know when to let go but it was probably 18 months including the research as well. I think it really shows that you were passionate about it and you talk about writing fast because it was really wanting to come out of you and it's always what makes a book so good is when you can tell the author is really into it. Liz, do you have another question, I think, right? I'm, I'm that person that like is not unmuting today. I'm like, I know, I'm, like, I'm, I'm just like, like, I can't I'm hear like, you, girl. Uh, I mean, I'm, Sarah's I'm, at midnight over here and she's like yeah. killing it. Like, what's your I excuse? I know, I know. It's like, I'm like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm being my mom right now. I like, I, <laughs> she never can unmute off a call. Um, okay. <laughs> So here's a question here. Uh, has, um, has anyone in your family read the book? And if so, what did they think? Did they have any interesting or surprising feedback? Yeah, I, I, quite a few of my family members have read the book. Um, I, th I, I think some interesting feedback was my husband was say, trying to find himself in the characters. <laughs> was there any of myself in Will was one of the questions. <laughs> right. I think people right. always do that when they read any of your work, they try and see themselves Absolutely. in the yeah. characters, very much so. But yeah, no, just generally quite positive feedback. But I think one of the things that surprised most of the family was how dark the book could be in places. They said, I really didn't know you had that in you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think sometimes when you when you write anything, and I write a lot of short stories as well, I think it's 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 always a weird feeling having someone read it and kind of get a window into your mind. Um, and I think I've included some of my darkest fears within the book. And I think there, yeah, there were a few raised Ooh. eyebrows <laughs> at some of the scenes. Yeah, I think particularly in your first novel, I, I do think people they're not used to like you having novels and I think they really try to read into it. I, what I find really interesting is the people that you actually secretly have written about never know it's about them. It's always the people you never thought of and they're like, was that me? Because like she drove an Audi and I drove an Audi and you're like, what are you talking? But then like, you know, you, you, someone you're like, person, oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah, and that person has no idea like what's going on. It's very interesting. Uh Absolutely. I had that with a short story once. I have to say I had wove elements of a friend in and they read the story and didn't comment at all. And whether they yeah. did see themselves, I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> I found right. that so funny. <laughs> yeah, I think people sometimes don't have the self-awareness to, to see that. Or maybe, you know, who knows. But OK, so uh, Catherine is asking, did you have any input into the cover uh, and or title? Yeah, the title actually stayed the same. So it was my working title. Um, mm -hmm. So I was really pleased that um, the publishers held on to it. Um, but yeah, I, I was quite open to it changing. Um, but yeah, the cover as well, um, I did have input into, but I was really pleased with what they came up with. I don't know if you've seen the UK cover too. They're quite similar in some ways, not mm -hmm. in colour, but they both feature the building. And I think that was really key because the building is very much a character in the novel and the covers didn't really change. So I had positive feedback almost immediately. There were small tweaks that were made, but yeah, I like both. Great. Um, and then we have one more question. Oh, well, another question just popped up too. Okay. Um, oh, it's a good question. Um, hi, Sarah, Liz, and Lisa. Hello. Um, Agatha Christie <laughs> wrote several novels where a murder happens in a locked room situation where there's no escape. Did you read a lot of Agatha Christie's novels? Did she influence you? Yeah, I think I grew up on a bit of a diet of Agatha Christie and it probably is a, a thing of living in Torquay. So she had a holiday um, home 
locally and actually grew up here so uh, we have an Agatha Christie festival every year which happens oh, in the wow. autumn so yeah I think I love the idea of lottery mysteries um for me I think there's a real kind of magic in having a sort of fixed group of suspects to sort of play with as an author um and mm -hmm. I also love the idea that people are sort of trapped in a situation there is no escape what kind of what I was saying before about having no Swiss police who could come in and save the day you're putting your characters under this real pressure which I think as an author you kind of get to see their metal what they're really made of so yeah I think there's a real magic in that and Agatha Christie has been a real inspiration in that way. Have you read um, Marie Benedict's new novel that uh, it's historical fiction and reimagines what might have happened in those 11 days that she went missing I think in 1927 oh, and the happens. it's really good you should oh, read it and okay. the title is escape it's like the uh, something Mrs. Christie I'll look I'll look it up and oh, we'll, yeah, put it, we'll put it in the chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, it just hit the New York Times bestseller list. It just came out the last couple of weeks. But if you oh. are a fan, you definitely should read it. Um, I don't read a ton of historical fiction and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so Ooh, yeah. yeah, let's see, we've got a couple more here. Um, Kristen's asking, loved all your uh, architectural details. Do you have an architect in the family or friend or did you just do a lot of research? Yeah, I, that's a really good question, actually. I did a lot of research and again went down a few rabbit holes um, in terms of sanatoriums. So I think one of the things I found fascinating in the research was how the architecture of sanatoriums um, were also influenced buildings that came after. So I think lots of the sort of, I suppose, almost creepy design features of sanatoriums that I've used within the book itself, the lots of glass, um, the kind of very focus on very little furniture was something I wanted to play with in the book. And I did a lot of research on how I could use that in the modern hotel and actually kind of worked quite nicely with pulling that into a modern minimalist hotel. But yeah, I did a huge amount of research because there was an awful lot. Um, yeah, it was just fascinating, fascinating how it influenced lots and lots of architecture that came afterwards. It was quite a profound movement, so yeah. That's great. And the book is The Mystery of Mrs. Christie and Julie has put it in the chat with a link if anybody wants to order it for more which I highly recommend. Lisa, I've got more questions. Do you want me to go? No, on? it's always want... better. Let them ask the questions. Okay, right? They're always better than mine anyway. Yeah, these are good. <laughs> these are actually really good yeah. questions too. Um, the what, readers okay. have the best questions. They do. What was the editing experience like for this book? Did a lot change in the book from the beginning um, of the process to the end? Yeah, the editing experience was, was, was great. As a debut, I think you don't always know what to expect. Um, there were a few changes, but I would very much say the sort of basic plot line stayed the same. Um, I think there was a lot of honing, um, particularly at the beginning sections. I think as a, as a debut author, there are elements um, that you need to sort of draw the reader in quite quickly. Um, so there are elements that were cut, but very much in terms of the characters um, and motivations, they stayed the same. So I think I was relatively lucky in that point. There wasn't anything hugely structural to do. Yeah, the structure stuff will always, I, mean, I think there's always like a sigh of relief when we get our edit letter <laughs> and it's just like, you know, make this person more likable. <laughs> like it, whenever it's like a structure thing, I mean, that is like pulling so many threads. It's like performing Absolutely. surgery. You really <laughs> can get upside down in an edit, edit like that. So I, that's great. Um, I've got more questions. Well, I um, have one on yes, just that go goes kind of, kind of goes with that, but I'm always curious and maybe that's, this might be in the Q and A, but I'm always curious, like the process of getting your agent for a debut, like how did you get your agent and, and what was that process like for you? Yeah, I did it very much kind of the traditional way, I suppose, in the slush pile. So I'd started off writing short fiction, um, but yeah, mine was a slush pile experience. So I sent in my first three chapters. I presume it works the same way in the US. You kind of send in those chapters. Um, yeah, and then you obviously then get someone saying, I'm interested in reading the full manuscript. Um, and yeah, it kind of, the process happened from there. So I was lucky to get a few offers, which was really great and exciting um, and had a day where I met a few. And I think you can kind of tell very much who you can work with and who you can't it's work like with. It's like dating. It's yeah. like, it's like going it, on a date. It is, yeah. it is like going on a date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much so. So yeah, it was, it was from the slush pile. So yeah, it was that traditional experience you read about, so, yeah. That's, That's awesome. great. All right, I'll give it back to the crowd. Well, yeah, so it, another question, and, and I'm sure your audiobook is already out there, but someone's basically asking if you narrated uh, the audiobook. 
Yeah, no, I didn't. It was by uh, an actress called Elizabeth Nolden. So she does a lot of BBC radio plays and a lot of audio books and her voice is just perfect. She really, really brings the kind of spooky nature of the book to life as well. So yeah, that is out now. Yeah, and I guess, you know, for me, like you know, people ask us that too, I would not want to narrate it. Um, I mean, if they, if they called you and they're like, Sarah, like, you wanna, <laughs> like, would you? I mean, I don't, Lisa, would you? I. I I, I think I, know I, I, I have, I'm not, I'm not good at reading things aloud. Like even when I read to my daughter, I feel like I just like, I can't sustain like long periods of that. So I don't think so. Yeah. I think it's a real art form, isn't it? In being able to, like you were saying, sustain the sort of enthusiasm as yeah. well as kind of putting with the different voices. I think, yeah, I would find that hugely tricky. I think some of the kind of sort of internal mon monologue I could do, but I think moving between the characters would be so hard. <laughs> yeah, I think Lisa and I have this voice that we kind of use for like our husbands, but it's also our dog. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, when like the girls doing them, it'd be like, whoa, like we always do the same voice yeah. for the day our <laughs> husbands, but it's also like our dogs or like anyone. And our husband's yeah. like, why do we have the same voice as the dogs? But I feel and like if I dance. narrated, like all the men would have- That would like, be our only other voice. And it would be, be like, like, who the hell is that? Be bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think bad. I would. <laughs> we're never narrate. We're never narrating. I respect the authors that do that. Uh, the one other question that I have was actually one that came in earlier, but I thought it was best to wait on it. Is uh, when can we expect your next book? And I'm just going to add on, what can you tell us about it? Yeah, probably around the same time next year. So I've just handed in my first draft of book two, which is very exciting. Um, and yeah, we follow Ellen actually, luckily for her, she gets away from Switzerland, <laughs> away from the snow and the hotel. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah. And she is back in the UK. So um, in the book, it kind of mentions that she's from Devon. So she's very much back in my hometown, but yeah, in a very another dramatic setting again um, and in an exciting case, but yeah. Poor Ellen gets does it to leave the snow <laughs> sorry I'm so excited does it have it does it tie anything in with the end of this one does it does do we get ah oh, yes okay <laughs> without saying okay too much that answers it. my question about the end and okay good yeah yeah you guys have to read this you're you, I'm just telling you it's like one of the best books I've read in a long time yeah wow. you were you've been yeah. very into it you've been talking about it it's I yeah, have. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's an amazing book. It's, uh, you sh it deserves to be talked about. Oh, um, so Catherine is asking, how has the writing process been different during the pandemic? Oh, wow. That's a great question. It, my whole writing process has been turned upside down. That is the only way, way I can describe it. So I usually write, I'm very much a morning person. So after I do the school run, drop the kids off, I have lots of coffee and do my writing. So I had a whole period set for the edits of this book um, and then working on my next book. And then the pandemic threw that up in the air. <laughs> Everyone was home. We were having to homeschool. So it was hugely challenging. I had really a month where um, obviously the new cycle was running. The homeschooling wasn't kind of optimized. Everyone needed logging in. Logins weren't working. So yeah, it was, it was hard. So I was squeezing in time sort of whenever I could. So it tended to be afternoon and evenings so it almost changed my whole writing routine upside down I would say and I then found I was squeezing writing time into when I would usually have downtime which would be the weekends um, and even sort of little holidays that I had planned I was writing and my husband would take the children away so yeah very very different. Yeah absolutely it's, it's crazy it's a crazy time to be a human. <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah anyone has it's been so tough isn't it right Lisa oh wait well I you know I don't want to oh I just saw your text any, yeah. I don't want to keep you it's fine I don't want to keep you up any later so can you just tell us like I mentioned your Instagram which I think is great if you want to read the book and then look at some of these pictures and the research so Tell them how they can find you on social media online. Yeah, so I'm mainly on Instagram and it's at Sarah Pierce Author, but I'm also on Twitter at Sarah V Pierce. And then I have my website, www.sarahpierce.co.uk. 
Great. And then I'm, we've got one more question that I'm just going to throw out that just came in. But before we do that, you can find us on social media, Instagram at Lisa and Liz and at Facebook at Liz Fenton and Lisa Steinke. And our website is Liz and Lisa.com. It has links to everything. We have a podcast, whatever. You can find everything there. Um, so one last question. I just make sure everyone gets their questions answered. And I think this is a great question. Uh, besides Agatha, who are some of your favorite mystery authors? Yeah, I probably, I, I have a wide range of mystery authors that I like. I love a Swedish author called Camilla Lackberg. Um, I love her series of books. I also love Joe Nesbo. Um, I go for a lot of the Scandinavian authors. Mm -hmm. I love his Harry Hole series, or as he describes it, Harry Hula. Um, there's the elements of everything I love in a good mystery. I, lo I love a good sort of central character. The detective is great. He's very much a flawed character. Um, and yeah, there's definitely dark elements within his writing. So yeah, I have a huge range of, of authors I love and draw on. That's fantastic. Um, oh, I see Julie's coming on. You want to take us <laughs> out, Julie? Sarah, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. And we oh, wish you yeah, thank all you. the best. Oh, thank you for having me. But I wanted to say that um, you're in great company with those authors that you love because you evoked the Scandinavian and the cold and everything was just like oh. spot on. It was so oh, perfect. Yeah, And the creepy hotel was just like, oh, loved it. <laughs> that was so great. It was just like, oh yeah, love me some good creep. So... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Sarah, thank you. Liz and Lisa, as always, thank you guys for doing these interviews. They're so much, so much fun. And um, who knew when we booked this that it was like Reese Witherspoon and all that fun stuff. So I mean, it's just you never know what you're gonna get with couch surfing, right? I love it. I love it. So um, books are in the chat. We had a little bit of um, technical difficulties getting onto Facebook right away. So. I am recording this, so it will, we have the whole conversation recorded, so that's going to end up on our YouTube channel after this, so if you missed anything, you can always go back to that. For the webinar people that were here with us, thank you um, for joining us in the webinar. We appreciate you doing that very much, too. So with that, Amanda, I know you are in the background, so we're going to wave everybody out, and we will log off of Facebook and stop. <laughs> like the, we need to do and the this. Webinar, the <laughs> webinar ends, and it just like ends, so it's like, boom, done. So um, Amanda, you can take us out. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Sarah. Thanks so much. Bye. Good to go.